We're using real names, by the way. Really? Yes. Oh, this is from Hel this is from Helen. Because she wanted real names used. Father Simon the Creative. I'm writing uh, my confession. Although those involved now know about it, they feel it needs to be passed by you and your team to decide if I and we are worthy of forgiveness. Let me set the scene. We're a family of six, and in the event in question, took, which took place ten years ago, when the children were the following ages. Here it comes. The oldest, Sophie, was 12. Our next daughter, Gemma, and the victim in question was six. Then there's Jack, who's four, and Katie, who was two. Gemma, a six-year-old, was a magical thinker at the time, which we were unaware of, but have since found out means that she always saw things literally. For example, when I told her I was going to pop over the shop, she imagined I would disappear and then reappear as if by magic, popping at the shop. When she had an enlarged gland in her neck from tonsillitis, the GP said, oh, you got a golf ball in there? And she asked him how it got there. Anyway, you get the picture. That's the kind of child she is. Anyway, we always holiday in Cornwall and have stayed in the same area and campsite since Sophie was four. We love it. They love it. If we go anywhere else, they say, can we go back? So that's where we go. We would spend our days going for nice walks in the area, often taking us hours and taking picnics with us. Uh, the children would have their own backpacks and their lunches in water bottles and waterproofs and all that kind of thing. They had favourite walks, and it was on one of these that the story is said. The walk was around Frenchman's Creek, real Daphne de Maurier country, and we would think of ways to make the walks interesting for four young children. To do this, we would search for things like bees, frogs, toadstools, squirrels, snakes, shrews, pixies, fairies, goblins and trolls. The first six we saw regularly. Sadly, the latter four were very elusive. But we would shout, Look, there's a pixie! Oh, do you see that flickering light from... The That's a fairy, definitely. That was the level of our conversation. Their dad, Dave, and I would tell them to watch out if we came to a large rock or a bridge or a stream just in case there's a goblin or a troll in there and explain to them that they're very quick and can grab their leg or their backpack for their lunch. This particular year, Gemma asked us if they were real. Yes, we said. Sadly, that's how we lost your big brother, Peter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> how about that? Some scarring. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. Just I... falling off a treadmill there, Joe. <laughs> Come back with that's so that's Here we go. I, ha I had an older brother, said Gemma. Yes, that's why oh, there's five. No. That's why there's five years between you and Sophie, and only two years between you, Jack, and Katie. We said, "Well, what happened to Peter?" Well, when we reach this bridge here, there's an area where a small wooden bridge with a gap underneath it with a stream runs down the hill. A goblin jumped out, grabbed Peter, and disappeared. <laughs> oh, she replied. <laughs> Look carefully around the bridge and the rocks, and we slowly walked on. We didn't really talk much about it and soon forgot this little story that we'd made up. Sophie obviously knew it wasn't true. Jack and Katie were too young to take it in. And we thought Gemma also realised it wasn't true as our walks continued with lots of fun and laughter. And no more mention of Peter, despite lots more talk of goblins and trolls. Then when Gemma was about 12, so this is six years later, we were walking Frenchman's Creek again. And when we came to Peter's Bridge, Peter's Gemma, bridge. now all sad, <laughs> said, Dad... Isn't this the bridge where oh, no. where Peter got taken by trolls? And she had a very reflective and a very subdued voice. And we realised she'd been sad for a while. Six years. It, Grieving for it. It was at this point that we looked at each other and realised that Gemma had and still did believe her non-existent brother Peter had been taken by trolls all those years ago. We explained that it was not real and that it had just been a story that we'd made up on the walk and we didn't think she'd believed us. Here's the line. Gemma got very angry. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah. stormed off, refusing to speak to us until we got back to the caravan. We sat with her and talked it through, and to this day, every time we walk Frenchman's Creek, we have to pay homage to Peter's Bridge. Gemma feels... That, here's the thing. Gemma feels before she can forgive us, we need to seek forgiveness from you, your collective, and your listeners. So here I am, says Helen, asking for forgiveness for our sin of 
Peter the non-existent brother who was taken by the trolls at Frenchman's Creek. Sounds like a great folk song. <laughs> Yours in shame and hopeful anticipation. Helen, P.S. Gemma is now 16 and has insisted I use real names. So, that's the information. <laughs> it's a shocking story. Lying to your kids. Is it always a good idea? We'll find out about Matthew in just a moment. Let's go first to Joe Wiley as she makes her debut. What do you say, Joe? Well, Gemma's obviously harbouring quite a lot of anger and pain. If she's still insisted <laughs> that they use the real names, she's obviously very, very cross. Yes. Um, that is completely unforgivable. Very, very funny, but completely unforgivable. Um, she's probably, she needed counselling, I'd imagine. She's been grieving this brother for like six, six years. years. Six years. She thought she had an older brother <laughs> taken by a troll. How could you do that? Well, they just thought it was a good joke, and they didn't realise that she was a magical Maybe thinker. Maybe think it through a little bit. Maybe. Um, yeah, so no, unforgiven, sorry. OK. Uh, I think there are jokes, and then there are jokes. I mean, you can say that there are fairies <laughs> under the tree, but you just can't see them. But to say that your brother was taken, I mean, that's really macabre. And they also knew that Gemma was really gullible. I just don't get it. Well, I, don't no. think, I don't think they did know uh, the fact that she uh, believed things literally at the time. Oh, I see. Yes. Anyway, as it turned out, Gemma was clearly traumatised by that. And I, I agree with Joe. I can't forgive that. Uh, Let's try Novice Nige. Well, yeah, what I'm kind of surprised at is that Gemma harboured all this for six years. She never discussed it with any of her uh, siblings or any of her mates. So no, no doubt she is in treatment, what have you. <laughs> but the, the brother who could not be mentioned. Uh, there should be a blue pack on Peter's Bridge now, I think that's definitely. But I do not f forgive on this occasion Damage Dave or Horrid Helen. Uh, well, it'll be interesting to see what uh, people make of this, but here's Brother Matthew, I, who I, always I, thinks it's a good idea. It's OK to <laughs> lie to your kids, definitely. But I, I do think they missed a trick here in saying, yes, your elder brother Peter was taken by trolls but you could have used that to say because he wouldn't do his homework and didn't help with the washing up and that's what happens when you refuse to cooperate. So I am not going to forgive but only because they missed the opportunity to have her living in fear for the next six years.